All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to True Footy's ongoing redraft series. I'm joined once again by El Bush Daddy. El Maco. El Maco. No, not really. I'd, I'd be El, El Maco. Yeah. Maco surname. And, and Mr. you had Fogliani. Maccas on the way here. I did have Maccas over here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not our best intro. How are you, Lenny? I'm oh, good, thanks. Thanks for having me again. That's good. Uh, yes, so again, we are continuing... This little series. So, so far we've done 2014. We've done the 2001 podcast. Yeah. Uh, in our last video, we did 2008. Um, oh, is there any more than that? 2013, I think, has also yeah. been done by uh, on this channel. Uh, and today we are, again, ignoring Druzy and recruiting the, the draft guru, uh, <laughs> Lenny, for his insight as well. And we're going to be redrafting the top 15 of the 2010 ballot today, um, which is one that has... I have fond memories of as an Eagles fan. We did particularly well out of this. I think four or five premiership players. At least, yeah, four and then one traded in in Jamie Cripps. So, um, yeah, these are happy memories for me. Uh, before we get into the video, we do have to acknowledge that this video is brought to you by Manscaped, our sponsors. So if you want fresh, clean balls, uh, you should check out manscaped.com. Get 20% off their elite products. Uh, and you can use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, or one word. And you also get free shipping as well. So... Check that out. You'd be helping them and you'd also be helping us grow the channel. Cool. All right. <laughs> and preventing those pubes from growing. Yeah, well, that's true. That's an important thing for a, uh, a young man in this day and age. <laughs> it is 2021. We're all manscaping as well. So, um, yeah, grow up. Um, all right. So today, looking at 2010, obviously. Um, and this is the third time we've done a redraft, us three together. And you did pick one in 2001. Yep. You did pick one in 20, 2008. 2008. That's right. Uh, and so today I figured I would um, take the baton and, um, and select with pick one for Gold Coast. Um, before we get into that, I should actually just also recap what the top 15 actually was. So for people who don't remember the 2010 draft in particular, this was the first compromise draft where Gold Coast came into the, uh, into the competition. It had something like, I'm um, just counting like 10 of the first 15 picks. Um, so it was a bad year to come last as an Eagles fan. Obviously, yeah. the Eagles won the wooden spoon that year. And uh, David Swallow, um, as I recall, was considered like one of the best young WA prospects ever. And the Eagles could have had pick one, but obviously it was compromised. But anyway, I'm ragging on. Um, David Swallow was pick one to the Gold Coast Suns, and he joined Harley Bennell and Sam Day before Andrew Gaff went to West Coast. Jared Polek was pick five for Brisbane, and then Reese Conker, Josh Caddy, Dyson Heppel, Dion Prestia and Daniel Goring got picked up. There's quite a few uh, Richmond players in there, a couple of Richmond Premiership players that started at Gold Coast. Uh, pick 11 was Tom Lynch, again, uh, add him to the list of uh, Richmond Premiership players, before Lewis Cook, Seb Tate, Brody Smith, and Billy Smets uh, were picked up by um, those clubs. So, starting, now you have context, we'll start at the top. Before I take pick one, we'll do... We'll go around the table and say who you think should go pick one. Yep. Uh, Busher, looking at the list of players available, who would go pick one for you? I initially had a name, but then you reminded me of one before the conversation <laughs> started. I'm not going to say it because it'll come up with you two guys because it's probably the consensus, I'm guessing, but I'll just throw out a bit of a contrarian one here, Luke Parker. Okay. Who's a deserving, very good midfielder. He's be a worthy number one pick, but I think... The one you guys would probably say is probably a little more worthy. Luke Parker was pick 40 in the original um, draft yeah. as well, which is crazy. Uh, Lenny, who would you take with pick one in this redraft? Um, well, I think we spoke off air, and I think if I say the name, I'm stealing uh, your That's thunder. All right. so, Go for it, um, go for I'd it. I'd probably take a bloke at, who's now at West Coast and probably rivals Alex Rance as the best key defender in the modern era in Jeremy McGovern. I like it. Great pick by you. Um, I'm going to follow that up and say that he is, after being... Pick 44 in the rookie draft. Kid drafter from Albany um, had weight issues, was um, d does not and still does not look athletic at all. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of Eagles fans at the time would, when we picked him up, were like, "Gee, like, what exactly is it about this kid that saw them pluck him?" But um, obviously, his vertical leap is ridiculous for a guy his size. Great intercept mark, um, and really skillful at setting up the play for a big man as well. It's seen him have four All Australians and obviously a premiership in there as well. And he's on something like a million dollars a year at the moment as well. Were we well, able so. to father son him? No, because okay. Andrew McGovern had only played like 40 okay, games. Yeah, I, I knew it was something borderline. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, Andrew, um, you're going to love this. He was the bloke who basically won you guys the grand final in 2018. Yeah, true. Yeah, started off that uh, passage of play. Oh, and he played that entire game the with like, ribs. yeah, <laughs> like blood in his uh, urine and stuff like that. So, uh, absolutely tough mother flipper, as they say in the classics. Um, so, with. 
pick one, Jeremy McGovern going to the Gold Coast Suns. Bush, who's going pick two? Are you going to go with Luke Yeah, I'll Parker? stick with Luke Parker, as I alluded to before. Yep. He's had a lot of productive years in Sydney, which has been a good team. So he's shown he can be productive in a good team, not just like a bit of a rock lift, who I mentioned in the last video. Mm-hmm. Very good numbers on not so good a team sort of thing. Sure, sure. Okay, okay. Uh, and Lenny, you've got pick three, Gold Coast again. I would go with Dyson Heppel, who originally won the Rising Star this year. He's played about 170 games. He's an All-Australian Best and Fairest winner, and he's currently the captain of the Bombers. Yes, good nomination. I do remember being filthy that he was Rising Star over Shuey, uh, but so be it. My bias juices are flowing in this game because I'm going to pick another eagle here. I'm going to go with Andrew Gaff, who was originally pick four to West Coast, um, and I'm holding that position, pick four again at West Coast. Um, Been super good since pretty much his first season. I think he had like a 40 possession game in like his first or second year. Like he's always been able to find the ball. He's put together 215 games, two of them all Australian. Um, and one best and fairest and 2018 in particular I remember he was probably one of the best midfielders in the game that particular year well, I think he finished 6th for 7th in the brown line. yes and that was after he missed the last 3 or 4 games by punching Andrew Brayshaw we won't mention that part <laughs> um, but yeah no you're right he uh, he pulled pretty well I doubt he would have beaten Mitchell had he had a full season but uh, yeah no he just played really well that year so I'm going to biasly nominate my boy Andrew Gaff for pick 4 but there's still some really juicy names on the list who you got uh, I'm going to have to go with Tom Lynch here. It's the Gold Coast now Richmond rendition of Tom Lynch, this one, I believe. <laughs> rendition. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But yeah, he's been a very good key forward, like, big unit, like, obviously got a lot. Have seen it? <laughs> <laughs> Stop making that joke. But yeah, like, he's obviously, like, in terms of, like, if you're having a draft, he's got all, like, the shit people like looking at in draft without the gift of hindsight like we have but he's sort of lived up to the hindsight as well mm. won a, he won a does he have a Coleman up he his, doesn't have yeah, a Coleman he, but yeah. he was obviously he's been in the thick of it yeah. for most of that yeah he's been in the thick of it and he's just good set of hands pretty dependable I'm sure he could win a Coleman in the next yeah. few years to be honest so, yeah. especially well, once Jack Rewald sails on well, mm. and when you got Dusty Koch and Prestia lacing you out yeah that's it yeah, yeah. yeah. Bloody oath. Uh, speaking of Richmond, uh, they're on the board. Lenny, who you got? Well, I'm going to steal one of your blokes, and I reckon Jack Darling. Nice. I reckon he's, in my personal opinion, I think he's very maligned by West Coast fans. I think he's a, one of the best centre-half forwards in the game right now. He's one of the most accurate kicks for goal, whether it's in open play or a set shot. Um yeah, and I think if Richmond, if it's Richmond's picked, I reckon they'd take him. I agree. Uh, I I had him pretty close. I didn't have him quite next, but um, but I think he has shot to prominence, particularly since like 2018, the year the Eagles won the flag. He was the reason he was maligned is not because he wasn't any good. It was just that he was often there making dumb mistakes in big moments. So yeah. the chess mark drop of 2015 comes to mind. That, I think the tabiner of the West Coast, if you will. In, yeah, um, the 2018 grand final. And yes, when that happened, I yes. thought Collingwood were going to do to play West yeah. Coast. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So, um, yeah, it's moments like that that make him frustrating. But uh, in 2019 in particular, that's when yeah. he announced himself as a really elite forward. So I have to agree, that's a great call. Uh, another biased Eagles pick. But we've got three in the top six here, so I'm, I'm liking it. One player, again, this is the second video in a row where I reckon I've got an absolute slider. Uh, Isaac Smith is still on the board, and I'm going to take him with pick seven for the Gold Coast Suns. Obviously he played... next pick as was well. Was he? Yeah, yeah. So... Um, 210 games, uh, drafted as a mature rager at pick 19 originally. He's won three flags at Hawthorne. Now he's defect- defected to Geelong, and it's going to be interesting to see, because he's outside and so skillful, whether he can really sort of recapture that earlier career form in a team that's really well, well suited to just feed him the ball. So, um, yeah, great pick for Hawthorne in hindsight. Essendon's on the board. And I've happily, with that pick, you've allowed Dion Prestia to slip into my hands, True. the human meatball. You know what? I think I forgot him to write him on my list, but I think, yeah, that's that's a good pick. Yeah, like he's good accumulator of the ball, good dependable midfielder. Yep. Now that he's gone to Richmond, like a lot of these early Gold Coast picks from this 2010 draft, mm. yeah, he's doing well there. I agree, yeah, very, very good midfielder. I'd go with Jeremy Howe. Jeremy I think Howe. he's become Collingwood's most important player. I think when we saw him go out last year with that awful-looking knee injury... Mm. Um, he just thought they couldn't really kick the ball out of defence. They couldn't really roll off their opponents. Um, and yeah, that's why I'd take him pick nine. I like it. I like it. He was f- close to next for me. I'm gonna. I'm choosing between a couple of boys here. I don't want to give away my other one because I want to see if I can get him on the next pick. But 
Cam Guthrie, I've, I've actually got bolting into the, the top 10 here. Um, one is first All-Australian jumper in 2020, and he's put together 182 uh, games in a very successful Geelong team. So um, big fan of your work, Cam. Uh, pick 11 is now on the board, and who you got? I'm going to go a very good halfback flanker, and Brody Smith. Nice. He's Solid. had a good, dependable career at Adelaide. He's won some, I think he's got at least one All-Australian up yep. his sleeve as a defender. Good accumulator, good user. Great player to have in your back six. I agree. Good call. Who you got, I, Lenny? I've got, tossing up between two, but I'm going to go with Tommy Libertore. Um, he's played just under 150 games. He was a key member of that premiership. Um, also hit Colin Funky Miller for six runs at the MCG <laughs> after that. <laughs> and um, he's got three. Oh, he's one of best and fairest, and he's got another two top three placings. Cool. Yep, I like it. Good pick. He's one that I didn't have in this next couple of picks, but I just think that's because this next glut of players is quite even. I think there's a lot of quality on the board, and I'm glad that I didn't pick the other guy because he is now still available. I'm going to go Sam Managola because he was actually rookie pick 19 in this year's draft yep. to Hawthorne. And I think in between Geelong, he also went to Fremantle on their rookie list, yep. then got drafted as a mature ager after tearing it up for Subiaco in the waffle. And now he's become, uh, well, he had an absolutely elite season in 2020. Um, and he's still, what, like 28? So still some footy in front of him as well. So happy with that pick. There's two picks to go. Yep. Who you got for your final pick? There's a few no- interesting names here, but I'm probably going to have to, out of them, go with Josh Caddy. Nice. He's had, he had some very good early years in Geelong where he sort of built himself up a bit of a career, then went to Richmond, ironically, thinking he was going to get midfield opportunities. Ended up playing the same forwardy role that he did in Geelong and killed it for Richmond as well. So <laughs> everything worked out there. Yep, good call. Very good player. Annoying player, but very talented. Yep. Yep. Uh, final pick of the draft, Lenny, who you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Paul Puopolo. Ooh, He's nice. a small forward. He was instrumental in Hawthorne's three-peak. bit like a Luke Boost, as you were alluding to in the last video. Um, yeah, he's just, oh, I think he's very deserving to go pick 15. I agree, I agree. Uh, so that rounds out the top 15. I'll start it from t- top to bottom. Uh, Jeremy McGovern went pick one. Luke Parker picked two before Heppel, Gaff and Lynch rounded out a very, very strong top five. Then you got Jack Darling, Isaac Smith, Dion Prestia, Jeremy Howe and Cam Guthrie. And then Gold Coast picked their, well, this would be like their seventh pick, Brody Smith at pick 11. Tom Liberatore, the fa- former father's son, went at pick 12. Sam Menegola, rookie pick 19, bolted into the top 13 before Josh Caddy and Paul Puapolo went 14 and 15. Is there anyone that you guys still have on your list and you think, gee, I can't believe they, they're still on the board? I think Mitch Wallace is worth a mention. Like, he's yeah. been a very good player for the Bulldogs, part of that. He was injured for the Premiership. He broke his leg, I'm pretty mm. sure. Yeah, I think he was injured for the Premiership, but he was a good part of that yeah. unit that built to that Premiership. Yeah. You can give yeah. him credit for that, I guess. But yeah, he's a very good player. Even David Swallow, the original number one pick. Oh, sure, yeah. He's been a pretty steady, dependable player, just stuck on a shit team. Mm. Um, Jason Johannesson, who won the Norm Smith. Yeah. So the Bulldogs did very well. JJ oh, did, 10, yeah. I thought he was 11 or 12, wasn't he? No, no, he was huh. a rookie pick in 2010. Oh, yeah, shit, you're right. When it yeah. comes yeah. up, it says 2011 rookie, rookie draft. That's right, yeah. That's really weird. It can get confusing because the, yeah, the rookie and, and pre-season draft, I think, have the next year's yeah. year on it. Yeah. But it's it all happens within the same couple of weeks. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's surprising that a Norman medalist didn't make the list of, of top 15 redrafted. I'll nominate a few others. Uh, I think Wallace and Johannesson were really good nominations. I both had them, but Dalhouse is still there. Jared Polek, pretty handy player for yeah. uh, Port Adelaide. Uh, yep, Jamie Cripps. Right. Yep, good call. Um, Jared Lyons as well is putting together a neat little career across three different clubs. And then North Melbourne's Sean Atley is a pretty yeah. handy player Atlee's as well. a good role player going on Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Tommy McDonald. Okay, there's quite a few names then. All right, yeah. Sammy Day, yeah. yeah, Harley. Oh, I was going to say Harley Vanell, but that yeah. was that would know who would know and would be. Uh, <laughs> but it, obviously, a, arguably the most talented player on that list yeah. just couldn't put it yeah. together. So, yeah. yeah, cool. All right, guys. Well, that is our top fifteen. Let us know in the comments just how badly we got it wrong, uh, and let us know if you're enjoying this series. And also, I guess let us know what draft you want us to do next because right. these are fun. I enjoyed these. Absolutely. So. Cool, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.